In lesson 8.3, the integral test and P series, we're going to add to our repertoire of tests that we have available to determine whether a series uh, is convergent or divergent. Recall that in lesson 8.2, we talked about the nth term test for divergence, as well as uh, geometric series and uh, telling whether they converge or diverge by looking at the ratio. In lesson 8.3, we are going to address the integral test, which essentially involves turning the series into a function and seeing if the integral converges. And we're also going to look at P series, which uh, if a series carries the form 1 over n to some power, uh, we can employ the P series test very easily. So why don't we go ahead by uh, taking a look at the integral test. The first new test that we're going to add to our toolbox of convergence tests is what we call the integral test. Now, the way the integral test works is we're going to take our series, uh, which we'll call a sub n, and we're going to turn that into a function of x. Once we do that, we need to check three conditions, and all three conditions must be true in order to utilize this test. Our function must be always positive. Our function must be always continuous. And finally, our function must be always decreasing uh, for all values of x greater than or equal to 1. And if that's true, then both our series, uh, in other words, the original problem that we were probably given, uh, as well as the integral from 1 to infinity of our newly created function will either both converge or they will both diverge. Therefore, if I can check the integral and make a conclusion about the integral, then that same conclusion will be true about my original series. It's a beautiful thing, and so long as we can integrate the series reasonably well, uh, it's a very effective test that we can use. In our first few examples here, we'll explore what the integral test looks like and how to actually use it uh, to determine the convergence or divergence of a series. We'll start with what appears to be a rather simple series here. And if I take this series and turn it into a function in terms of x, hopefully it's uh, evident to tell that this would simply be 2 divided by 3x plus 5. So what I'm going to do is um, to go ahead and find the integral of this function from 1 to infinity. Now, recognizing that there is a constant here, I am going to pull the constant out. Uh, leaving me with 1 over 3x plus 5 dx. Now, I could do a u du substitution, or hopefully you can just tell, uh, that if the bottom is in fact 3x plus 5, I'm going to want the derivative of that up in the numerator. And so I will put a 3 up here and balance that with the 3 on the outside. Uh, everything is still equal to the original problem, but now I can integrate this. Um, of course, I do have an issue with the uh, infinity there. So perhaps before I integrate, uh, I'll go ahead and I will do a limiting agent. So I'll go from 1 to b of 3 over 3x plus 5 dx. All right, now I can go ahead and integrate it. Uh, everything is copacetic here. I have my limit in place. And uh, let's see what's the result of this uh, integration here. I'll end up with the natural log of the absolute value of 3x plus 5. Uh, I'll integrate that from 1 to b. All right, so far so good. Uh, let me move this up here, and uh, you'll see that what we have is 2 thirds. I'm going to, again, keep the limit in place. But when I substitute in uh, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, what I'll have here is the natural log of 3b plus 5 minus the natural log of, uh, when I stick 1 in here, I'll get 8. Now the natural log of 8, uh, that's no problem. That's a constant. But take a look at what would happen here. What is the limit as b approaches infinity of this uh, natural log here? Well, hopefully you can tell that that would be uh, divergent. And because this, uh, because this integral diverges, what I can go back and say is that my original series diverges as well. In our second example, I'm going to do something that I should have done, although didn't do in the first example. That is, rather than just think about the conditions, I'm actually going to write them out this time. Now, it should be clear that if we want to turn our series into a function, uh, f of x will equal x 
uh, times e to the negative x over 2. And that's all fine and dandy. Uh, what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and drawn a graph over here uh, so you can see what this function actually looks like. Uh, before we go ahead and do the integral test here, let's go ahead and check our conditions. Our first condition, of course, is that uh, f is positive. And certainly if we uh, look at the graph, I think it's safe to say that uh, for our entire interval from 1 on to infinity, um, this certainly is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark on that one. Now, our second condition uh, is that f must be continuous. And again, uh, if you look at our graph, I think it's safe to say that starting at 1 and continuing on to, continuing on to infinity, uh, this graph certainly is continuous. So, so far, so good. Uh, our third condition is that f must always be decreasing. And uh, so, if we go ahead and take a look at our graph this time, uh, let's see. Well, you could say that this graph is decreasing uh, most of the time. Uh, that certainly you could argue. However, uh, this condition says that f must always be decreasing, and clearly it's not. Uh, from 1 to about here, uh, the graph is going up. After that, it's going down, and that's fine. But because this little part of it is going up, we have not met our three conditions, and therefore we cannot use the integral test to determine anything about this particular series. Our third example uh, is perhaps yet another trick. Uh, if we take a look at this, um, clearly I can see that the series is just going to be the sum of this term uh, as we go from 1 to infinity. Certainly if n equals 1, uh, you can see that uh, this term would be 1 over 1 squared plus 3. So we are going from 1 on to infinity. However, check your three conditions. I'm not going to write them down this time, but I challenge you to think about them yourself. Uh, I'll just leave you with a thought that uh, this series um, will not apply to the integral test. Uh, and I'll go ahead and write this here. Integral test does not apply. However, I will leave it to you to try to determine why that's the case. In example D, we're going to try to use the integral test to find the uh, convergence or divergence of uh, this series that's given to us here. Uh, of course, just like before, I'll begin by turning this into a function, which in this case would be uh, f of x equals 1 over uh, x to the 1 third, which I'm actually going to rewrite as x to the negative 1 third. Now, if we think about our conditions, this is always positive for all values of x greater than 1. This is continuous for all values of x greater than 1. And this is decreasing for all values of x greater than 1. So this does pass all three conditions required for the integral test. That being said, let's go ahead and try the integral test and see how this works out. Uh, what we'll have is the integral from 1 to infinity uh, of x to the negative 1 third dx. Now, uh, just as before, of course, we can't do a uh, integral to infinity. So I will set up a limiting agent here. And now this is an integral that we can handle. In fact, uh, if we do this, uh, this will end up being x to the 2 thirds. Um, and we will integrate that from 1 to b. This should be a b right here. So from 1 to b, uh, of course, there needs to be a 3 halves out front. And I do need to keep my limit as b approaches infinity in place here. So when I work this out, what I'm going to end up with I'll have 3 halves. Uh, the limit is b approaches infinity. And what I'm going to have here is uh, b to the 2 thirds power minus 1 to the 2 thirds power. And clearly, you can take a look at this. And if I were to stick infinity in for b, infinity to the 2 thirds power, uh, if you want to think about it that way, does diverge. And so what do I know about my original series? Well, I know that my original series then diverges as well. Since we, uh, in essence, kind of skipped example C, um, I do want to try another problem very similar to example D, uh, one that might give you a little bit more trouble, but certainly one uh, that will stretch your mind a little bit. So in our new example that we're adding, which I'm going to call example D and a half, 
uh, we're going to try to find the convergence or divergence of this given series using the integral test. Now, this series uh, is not too far different from example D. Um, instead of 1 over n to the 1 third, uh, this is simply going to be 1 over n to the pi power. All right? So, of course, the first thing we're going to do is turn this into a function of x, and that'll simply say 1 over x to the pi power, uh, which I'm going to rewrite as x to the negative pi. Now we should check our three conditions. Uh, this function is always positive, this function is continuous, and this function is always decreasing uh, on the interval from 1 to infinity. So we are OK to go ahead and try the integral test here. What I'm going to challenge you to do is to pause this video right now and try doing the integral of this function on the back of your notes. Uh, certainly when you're finished, come back and join us, and we'll see if we uh, end up with the same result. Now, for those of you who are sticking with it, uh, if we're going to go ahead and do the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative pi dx, well, just like before, I cannot integrate to infinity, and so I will set up a uh, limiting process here. I'll go to the limit uh, as b approaches infinity of 1 to b of x to the negative pi dx. Now, uh, although pi is not a, a standard power that we've dealt with, it's still nothing special. Um, we're still just going to add 1 uh, to the exponent, uh, which will give us x to the uh, 1 minus pi. And then we're going to divide that by our exponent, which we got x, or 1 minus pi, rather. And of course, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to take that from 1 to b. Now, this in the uh, denominator is a constant. so. Uh, for no reason at all, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out here because that's what I like to do. And I'll set up my limit again. If I stick b and 1 in here, what I'm going to end up with is b to the power of 1 minus pi, which we'll deal with that in just a moment. That might be a little confusing. Uh, and then I will subtract 1 to the 1 minus pi power, uh, which is just going to be 1. So uh, what happens as b approaches infinity of this term right here? It's a little bit hard to tell, but perhaps it would be easier to tell if I reciprocate that. In other words, if I take it to the bottom and call it 1 over b to the pi minus 1. See, all I really did there was just negated the exponent and took it to the bottom. Now you can see that when I stick infinity in for b, what's going to happen to this term? Well, it's essentially going to zero out. I'm going to get such a big thing on the bottom, that that is essentially irrelevant. And so what I end up with here is uh, simply going to be negative 1 over 1 minus pi. Or if you want to, you can rewrite that as 1 over pi minus 1. It means the same thing. Either way, what we get is that our integral uh, does converge. All right, We did get a, uh, a real answer for it. And so what that tells me is that our original series converges as well. Now, this is really interesting. We've dealt with two series that look very, very similar. Uh, we've dealt with 1 over uh, n to the 1 third and found that it diverged. Then we went ahead and dealt with 1 over n to the pi and found out that that converged. In our next couple examples, we're going to take a look at the p series, which actually is represented by both of these series right here. And uh, we'll determine a shortcut to find out whether a, a series of this fashion converges or diverges. Back in chapter 7, we dealt with a, um, a family of functions that at the time I informally called p-series and mentioned that we would get to again later. And here they are. We're now going to discuss uh, what a p-series looks like and how to tell whether a p-series converges or diverges based simply off of the value of p. It's a beautiful thing. Now, the p-series is defined as the, uh, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p power. Um, if we were to do an integral test to the p-series, uh, which I certainly encourage you to do, but we'll end up with something looking very similar to our previous example, example d and a half. Uh, in example d and a half, which you did write down, I'm sure, uh, if you change the pi to a p, 
you'll end up with essentially the uh, derivation of the rule I'm about to show you for the P series. So certainly go back and look at that and determine for yourself when you think it will converge and diverge. In example D, uh, N was one third. Uh, I'm sorry, rather, P was one third. And what we found out was that that diverged. In uh, example D and a half, uh, P was equal to pi. And we found that the series converged. And again, if you look at your work from example D and a half, um, substitute in a, a P for the pi. And what you'll find out is that the P series certainly converges if the exponent, the value of P, is greater than 1. In other words, that function will be asymptotically approaching 0 fast enough that the, uh, the terms will become small enough that we're essentially adding nothing at the end, and it does converge. Uh, however, a P-series will diverge um, if that value of P is anywhere greater than 0, uh, but less than or equal to 1. So that would be an example of when it's, uh, the series is not shrinking quickly enough. Certainly, you could graph a few different P-series, some of them with P greater than 1, some of them with P less than or equal to 1. Um, and you'll certainly see that some of them approach the asymptote a lot faster than the others. Be very careful. If P does equal 1, uh, in other words, if we have the series 1 over N, uh, which we do call the harmonic series, um, that series does, in fact, diverge. So be very careful with that. Now that you know the P series test for convergence or divergence, I'm going to go ahead and group the next two examples together because with the test, uh, these are actually very, very, very easy examples. Uh, in our first example, example E, uh, if we rewrite this as a series going from n equals 1 to infinity, notice that each one of these terms is 1 over the cube root of n squared, uh, which I could write as such, 1 over the cube root of n squared. Uh, the, uh, the formatting of that is, is a little iffy. Um, I'd like to identify the full exponent, and so let me go ahead and write this as 1 over n to the 2 thirds. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and say that uh, p is 2 thirds. 2 thirds is uh, clearly less than 1, and so this particular series is going to diverge. Now, in example f, we've actually already played a little bit with this series in example d and a half. Um, but we did that using the integral test. We can look at this now using the, um, the p-series test and realize that uh, it's already written out as a p-series. And this particular p-series has p equals pi, uh, which is greater than 1. And therefore, I know that this series will converge. Of course, we found that it converged already with the integral test. And now we're sure that it converges because of the p-series test. For our last three examples in Lesson 8.3, uh, we're going to make some approximations to P-series and uh, then use those approximations uh, and the P-series test to determine the convergence or divergence. See, generally, things are not given to you as a P-series. Uh, that would be very, very easy, uh, perhaps too easy. And so what they're going to do is give us series that we can turn into P-series uh, through the use of approximations. So. For this series here, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. Um, and again, this is simply an approximation, but I'm going to start at 2 and take this up to the uh, 1 over n times the square root of n squared. I think you can agree with me that for very large values of n, this minus 1 is essentially irrelevant. And so what I get is 1 over n square root of n squared. Now, that, of course, I can rewrite, uh, simplify that a little bit. Um, I could actually write this as 1 over uh, n to the, well, n squared, really. Um, if you think about it, this square root of n squared is really just equal to n. So what I have is n and n, which gives me n squared. Well, now that I know that I do have a p-series approximation, I can say that p equals 2, which is clearly greater than 1. And therefore, this particular series will diverge by the p-series test. Let's take a look at a, uh, another series that actually uses two p-series tests 
in one problem. In example H, we have a series that is actually a composition of two other series. And using the properties of series, I can actually rewrite this um, as two separate series. So I'll rewrite it as this series here uh, subtracted by this series here. I'm absolutely allowed to do that. I'm not breaking any rules or conventions, and everything is still equal. What's the advantage of doing that? Well, I can see from this series uh, that I do have a p series with uh, p equals 2. Uh, 2 is greater than 1, and so I see that the first part of this series does converge. Over here, I also have a p series with p equals 3, which again is greater than 1, and therefore this part of the series converges. Now, when I'm subtracting two different convergent series, what do I end up with overall? One big convergent series. Now, be careful here. Uh, if either part of this series did diverge, then the entire series would diverge. Um, but that didn't happen in this case. In this case, they both converged, and so I have overall a convergent series. Let's take a look at one last example, where again, we need to make an approximation. For our last example, in lesson 8.3, we're going to try to find the convergence or divergence of this series. Now, I said earlier that we were going to do a sort of approximation here, and let me show you what this approximation is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and argue that the denominator is growing very, 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 very fast, especially relative to the numerator. And I'm going to argue that this could be approximated by 1 over n cubed. Now, to any of you who might argue that point and say, how can you just throw out the natural log of n, uh, let me present this to you. Um, if y equals the natural log of x, let's just say, um, when y is 10, uh, that correlates to our x being a value of 22,026.5 approximately. Now, for y to grow one unit, for y to just grow to 11, is going to require x to grow to 59,874.1 approximately. Now, clearly, that is a very, very, very slow growth. So, is the numerator growing? Yes. But how fast is it really going relative to the denominator n cubed? It's almost irrelevant. And so I argue that this is a good approximation. In fact, uh, due to this approximation, notice that I do have a p series. Uh, I have that p is equal to 3, which is clearly greater than 1. And therefore, this series is going to converge. So uh, up to this point, we have now learned four tests for convergence divergence. I want to go ahead and remind you of these four tests. Uh, we started with the nth term test for divergence. Um, we haven't used that a lot uh, here in lesson 8.3, but please, please, please never forget about it. Uh, it's the easiest test to do, and um, it tells you right off the bat if you really need to proceed any further. Uh, after that, we talked about the geometric series tests. And uh, what that essentially involved uh, was looking at the value of r. Uh, in fact, it was the absolute value of r. And determining based on that r, uh, is each term growing or shrinking? And then determining the convergence or divergence based off of that. In this lesson, we also learned uh, two tests. We learned the integral test first, where we learned that if the integral converges, then the original series is going to converge. And if the integral diverges, the original series will diverge. So that was a very powerful test. And then we uh, concluded by looking, looking at the uh, p-series test, which was exceptionally easy, um, although a lot of times you do have to do an approximation. Uh, and of course, with the p-series test, we had to look uh, at the exponent um, to the value of n there. So be sure that you're familiar with all four of these tests. There will be more coming down the pipe as we proceed. And good luck with your assignment 8.3.